everyone. Welcome to We Working Women live stream. My name is Sherry Zhang. I'm the CEO and the co-founder of We Working Women, North America's largest platform for Chinese women's personal and professional development. Every month, we invite extraordinary guests from different industries to join us and share their professional knowledge wisdom and experience to the audience of over 100,000 subscribers. It's an opportunity for uh, our community to learn from the personal stories and the career paths of diverse professionals, and also a chance for global guests to connect with uh, our dynamic network of uh, global Chinese women. And today, we are so excited to, uh, to welcome Christine Cho as uh, our special guest. Uh, Christine, yeah, Christine <laughs> is a beauty expert. Beauty expert, I calculate, uh, makeup <laughs> artist, higher stylist, and uh, the most important, the influencer, well recognized in uh, Canada. And she appears regularly on nationally broadcast television programs uh, such as uh, the Marilyn and the Dennis show, uh, the breakfast television mm -hmm. and uh, the morning show. So Christine provides uh, customized uh, makeup and higher styling for all kinds of uh, clients, include celebrities and uh, uh, executives. And uh, her works uh, sh like has been featured on magazine, uh, in mm -hmm. the advertisement, and on TV show, like both in Canada and uh, uh, internationally. So uh, welcome, uh, Christine. Uh, it's so great to have you here today. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you, Sherry. I am so excited to be here. It's actually my first time on WeChat because as somebody who was born in Canada, it's not a platform that many of us are familiar with. Yeah. But I have heard lots about it from my Asian friends, so I'm very excited to be here. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, like I couldn't wait, you know, I'm so excited. Like I couldn't wait to, to uh, know more about your career, uh, your beauty uh, philosophy, and uh, your personal uh, stories as a Korean uh, Canadian, and also mm -hmm. as an Asian beauty influencer. So we have so many things to, uh, to talk about. So let's start it. Sure. Um, Okay, Christine, your career journey is uh, fascinating. So tell <laughs> us, how do you start uh, your career in, in beauty? Yeah, so I didn't start in beauty. I didn't know when I was a child that I wanted to be a beauty expert or a makeup artist. So like a good Asian girl, I went to university I got my uh, undergraduate degree in English literature yeah. and I thought I would go to grad school and become a professor or something professional because of course my parents just wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> so I thought, okay, if I'm not a doctor or a lawyer, at least I can do something, you know, a little bit higher education and respectable in the Asian community. Yeah. But I couldn't stop drawing and it's actually my mom's fault because I took private art classes when I was a child. So I was always drawing and painting. And then when I got older, I realized, wow, you can draw on people too. <laughs> so I did it as a hobby when I was in university to get extra money. I did it only on the weekends. And then someone said to me, wow, you should do this for a job. And I said, oh, that's not a real job. And uh, long story short, I went to George Brown College after University of Toronto. Uh -huh. And then I did, a, I did a makeup certificate because I wanted to be very business minded and professional about it. I didn't want to just be a artistic free spirit, you know, that kind of artist. Mm -hmm. So I, I took it seriously. And when I, when I got my um, certificate, I started volunteering at fashion week. I handed out my business card to strangers, which is very hard when you feel shy or nervous. 
I would go up to people and say, hi, I'm a, I'm a new makeup artist. You know, here's my card. And I actually Googled talk shows in Canada mm -hmm. when I found out people could go on TV and talk about this. Mm -hmm. And some, someone said to me, oh, your personality, you know, is great for TV. You should try it. I didn't know anybody in the TV business. My, my family is not connected in that area. I had no friends or colleagues in that field. Mm -hmm. So I Googled it. I said, oh, let me look what kind of talk shows we have in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I emailed, I emailed all of them. And I said, hi, I would like to be on TV and give advice on beauty and makeup artistry. And, you know, nobody got back to me for months. Nobody replied. So it's very discouraging when you have a dream and it doesn't happen quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And most dreams take time. So I was patient. I started to work. I worked really hard. I traveled all around the world. I worked on all kinds of, you know, artists, famous, not famous, business people, stay-at-home moms. I just worked. Okay. And I made sure my, my job security, I always tell people, make sure you're the best at what you do because then nobody can say no to you really mm -hmm. so i i learned from everybody i met i worked really really hard i i missed out on all my friends birthdays social events and all i did was work sure. and i i i felt so passionate about it and i always tell people you have to be your number one fan you have to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself who else is going to believe in you mm -hmm. so I told myself, I think I'm good at this. I, I think I can do this. And then one day, one day, a producer called me from CBC. Oh. And there was, a, there was a talk show at the time called Stephen and Chris. Okay. And they called me and said, we'd like you to come in and do an audition and try being on TV. I was so nervous. I didn't know <laughs> what I was doing. I, I had just graduated makeup school. I was nobody. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew this was my chance. And I said to myself, if you do well at this, it's going to open doors. I knew it. Uh -huh. So I made sure I prepared really hard. I practiced. But most importantly, you know, we were talking before we went live. Yeah. Most importantly, I offered myself because I knew if they like me for being myself, nobody can take my job because there's only one Christine show. There's only one Sherry Zhang, right? There's, yes. there's yes. nobody else who can be you. So I thought to myself, let me try this. And it worked. And they offered me a contract right away. Uh -huh. um, and they started they started to pay me to be on TV. And then I ended up on other talk shows. And my career, when you know, when you're on TV, you have more credibility. So yes. people think, wow, she must know what she's talking about. And nobody knew I was still a student. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when they say fake it till you make it, yes. like pretend you're really good when you when you don't know what you're doing. That was kind of me. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't I wasn't sure about everything, but I I felt like I was in the right place, mm -hmm. and I felt I I felt confident even though I was nervous. Uh -huh. And um, and then after that, things changed drastically. And when Brian saw me on TV, they wanted to partner with me and do influencer work. Yeah. And when I when when you're a professional makeup artist, influencer is a kind of a bad word because we felt like young kids were selling out. To make money so they're pretending they like this mascara or oh. they love this red lipstick because someone's paying you just like an actor you know they're paying you to say they, like yeah. a commercial mm -hmm. and i didn't i didn't want to do that because i wanted people to respect me for being an artist mm -hmm. and a teach and a teacher an educator in beauty mm -hmm. so i said i said no for a few years which was really foolish because you're saying no to uh a growth and i didn't realize how fast social media would grow and how important and how respectable mm -hmm. that kind of work can be mm -hmm. so i think the see i think the secret to being a a healthy influencer is to be authentic so still be yourself and don't say yes to contracts with products you don't like or brands you don't believe in i think that's important mm -hmm. know when to say no yeah um so anyway that's my crazy journey and now i'm uh now I can't even keep track. Like, it's amazing. I, I can't believe this is my life. And I think, wow, if I, my five-year-old self would look at me and say, wow, cool job. <laughs> That's really so. cool job. You know, uh, I think right now, like this uh, recent years, like everybody yeah. like the, wants to be an influencer, right? But I think at the beginning, when you start, like what you said, like uh, has an Asian background, like you need to be a lawyer, you need to be a, as what you said, right? And a doctor, that's real job. Yeah. So 
it's yeah. uh, untraditional. Uh, you you start mm -hmm. your uh, work. Correct, yeah. So yeah. Uh, was there encouragement or pressure from uh, your family? That's a great question. It's actually a funny story. Of course, there was not support at first. My dad, he's, he's Korean, right? So yeah. he's born in Korea. Mm -hmm. He looks at me, he said, you want to go to makeup school? He goes, no. He goes, I'm not paying for makeup school. I'll pay for law school, medical school, and graduate school, not makeup school. Okay. So I, I paid for it myself. I went into debt. I worked three jobs. I I told them I'm gonna do it anyway, and they said it's not you're not you're not gonna be successful. And I said, yeah, watch watch me. So sometimes your parents they mean well, but they're trying to challenge you to see does she really is she gonna work hard at it? So they yeah. you know they they wanted to give me a hard time to see if I was serious. Yeah, and I appreciate that because my personality. If you tell me no, I'll tell you okay, I'll show you. So I did that, and then. I got on TV, I thought, well, now they should be proud of me. And I invited my dad to a, a show. Uh -huh. And it was so funny because my friend's parents were like, oh, my God, so amazing. My dad came up to me. You know what he said? What's he said? I, he, he said, Christine, I don't understand what your job is. I said, what do you mean? I just <laughs> invited you to see my job. He goes, so you, you draw on people and they pay you to draw on their face. Uh -huh. I said, yes. And then he said, but today you didn't draw on anybody. You just talked about it. I said, yeah, it's a talk show. <laughs> he said, he shook his head. He said, oh, I don't understand and walked away. And so it was really funny because to him, like you said, it's not a real job. Like what yeah. kind of job? Yeah. What kind of job is it? So, but now of course my career has, has been a long path and I'm, I'm, you know, doing well and I'm, I'm working quite regularly. So now my parents of course are very proud of me and now it, they understand the world is changing and there's all kinds of strange new jobs. When I told my mom, brands pay me to use my phone to create videos and photos of their products and me using it, she, she couldn't understand why they would give so much money to do, like, she thinks it looks like playing, like you're playing a game. Like, what are you, what are you doing taking selfies? I said, that's my money. It's not, it's not because I like my face. It's because somebody wants to see me using their product. So... Mm -hmm. And um, I think with Asian traditional a Asian parents who are born in Asia, it it's they learn as well as like I learned a lot and they learned a lot. So I think it's a growing process for your family to understand new things. Yes. Um, and it's not just Asian parents. You know, a lot of my friends from other cultures have gone through the same thing when they're in unconventional jobs. Uh -huh. um, but I, I think at the end of the day, when you really work hard and um, define your own success, mm -hmm. I think other people learn to respect you even if they don't like your decisions. So that's that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I look at your post and I realize, like you said, you are daddy's girl and uh, I your dad has a great impact on you. And yeah, I, I can imagine like at that time, your dad said, I'm not going to pay you this and that. No, How much I cried. pressure you have it. I cried. Yeah. I, I was so um, discouraged and sad. I actually mm -hmm. cried and thought about giving up. I, I didn't know how I was going to make money. Makeup school is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Makeup is very expensive and you have to buy everything. <laughs> yeah. when, when you're nobody and nobody knows you, yeah. buying a $50 foundation is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because now everybody sends me stuff free because they want me to use it. But when I started, wow, I was broke. I was stressed. I was unsure if I was making the right decision. There were many times along my path, um, even when I became successful where I felt um, I wasn't sure if I made the right decision because I know job security is easier with a big corporation or with a more traditional path. Mm -hmm. And when when you're a freelance artist, there is a very high chance you're going to fail and be broke. That's just the reality. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to figure out how to make it a business. And as I mentioned to you, how do you make money becoming your brand? Like if you are the face of your brand, how do you make money doing that? It's challenging, right? So, yes. but once you figure it out, it's a dream. It's a dream job. Yeah, it's, I, I checked so many uh, the inst uh, Instagram, uh, and I see like you take your baby and then with your husband, sun uh, like a beach, sun everything. That's really amazing. <laughs> that kind of job, right? Everybody loves yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have you been in beauty uh, profession? 
right now? Oh, that's a good question. Now you're going to make me feel really old. Um, <laughs> probably, probably uh, it's definitely over 10 years, maybe 13 years or so. Maybe this is my 14th year, a long time. Uh -huh. But but even, even though that's a long time, when I decided to go into makeup, I had already finished my university degree and the teaching certificate. So I, I was old compared to the other students, students. Yeah. who were eight, they were 18 or 19 out of high school and they knew they wanted to do makeup. I was already well into my 20s, like 26, 27. I was later on. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a late start, but um, that just challenged me to work faster. And I was very, um, I would say, ambitious mm -hmm. and determined mm -hmm. to not, not only catch up, but pass people in my group. So I, I knew, I'm very competitive. So very competitive. Yeah. 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 And I, I, you just mentioned you're facing so much, uh, so many challenges like uh, in the early years. And uh, you just, uh, that's just showing you really love it. And then so you can do your best and then make money by yourself and then you can pass that. Uh -huh. That's really uh, great. And uh, thank you. Was being an Asian uh, woman in uh, Canadian <laughs> yeah. society like ever a challenge uh, for you? Yeah, uh, it's yes, definitely. Um, I was a little naive when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I was very because I, because I identify a lot as a Canadian because I was born here. Yeah, and English is my first language, and I have so many mixed friends. I, I was so naive and innocent. I thought, oh, Canadians are not racist. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody like everybody likes me. Everybody gets along, mm -hmm. which of course is not not true. They just in Canada they just hide it better um, than in America, for example. So mm -hmm. I learned that the hard way when I got older. And when I was in my twenties and started to get into the beauty field, and when you really start, I think people are nice to you until you start to become successful. Mm -hmm. And when you start to rise and they feel uncomfortable, you'll feel a little bit of, you know, tension. Could be passive aggressive comments. It could be outward racism. But um, what's interesting about my position was now I was on TV mm -hmm. in a most in a in a predominantly historically white country mm -hmm. where mostly white white women that were watching me and asking for beauty advice. Yes. And I never actually felt self-conscious because I didn't think about it. And then later on, other people pointed it out and said, wow, aren't you proud of yourself? You're an Asian woman and people are coming to you of all races, including white people mm -hmm. and asking, asking you what skincare, what makeup, how do you make your skin? And Oh, proud because I was like, of course, why, why wouldn't I? I'm educated. I worked hard. I know what I'm talking about. I understand the science mm -hmm. and I have, I have an English degree, so I know how to speak and write yeah. better than a lot of, a lot of white Canadians who, who maybe don't have language uh, background. Yes. So I felt very confident and um, experienced racism and in, uh, in workplace, sometimes uh, photographers and models, people making jokes. You know, I, I remember a client, uh, a client saying, and she was being serious, but she looked at me and said, oh, I love your eyes. Like, um, I want my eyes to look like yours. And I knew what she meant. She meant eyeshadow and the shape. But the photographer made a joke and said, oh, you want to look like this? Oh, that, that's for the Asian. Yeah. And I, and I, I swore, I'm not going to swear tonight. Uh -huh. I said, are you kidding me? I said, how can you talk like that to me? First of all, that's incredibly racist. Second of all, that's rude. And she didn't mean that. She meant eyeshadow and eyeliner and the shape and the lip. I said, I don't even want to work with you anymore. And he made me feel bad and said, oh, I was just joking. That's what racist people do, right, mm -hmm. in Canada. Oh, I was just joking. You can't take a joke. And I'm, I'm smart. I'm quick. You're racist. And I said, take care. Don't, book, don't call me again for work. And I went on to move up in my career and this photographer nobody even knows anymore so i i feel great when i think back about it and i, and I think wow what a loser <laughs> but um but you know it's interesting it's very interesting and i do have to comment that women are having a big moment right now everybody wants to be asian be asian listen to asian music you know k-pop or Japanese uh, style or Korean beauty products or, you know, Chinese food and everything's trending because 
we have a lot to offer and we always have. Mm -hmm. And for me, although I'm very proud of the trending moment for Asian women, for me, to be honest, I always thought, and I have to thank my mom for this, for raising me to think of this. I always thought Asian women were the, one of the most beautiful in the world. And I never thought having small eyes or yellow skin or, or dark hair was not attractive. I actually always looked at Asian women like, wow, beautiful. And I remember when I started my career thinking, how come, you know, Christian Dior and Chanel and they don't have any Asian people in their advertisements. We buy all of their stuff. Who spends money? We spend money. Yeah. So we're buying your products <laughs> and you're putting white, white people on the advertisements. I don't identify with this person. It's, it doesn't look like the people I know who wear your, your brand. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling them, like when I met people from there, I was like, your advertisements are terrible. Like it's always white people. Very rarely, once in a while, they put a black person because that was a, a lot faster to become trendy. Yes. And now one is Asian woman. And I'm laughing because I'm like, well, it took you long enough, but uh, I, I don't, I, I think I'm all for, I think Asian women have understood inclusivity and um, multicultural beauty for a long time. It was normal to us, you know, oh. to have different different features that were beautiful. So I'm, pr I'm very proud. I have to say, Sherry, I am extremely proud to be uh, a Canadian of Asian descent. Mm -hmm. um, and every time I meet someone and they say, oh my God, Asian women look so young. And I said, yes, thank you for <laughs> genetics. You know what? I just, uh, uh, today I, in WeChat, we have WeChat moment. And then uh, one of my friends just posted she said she's uh, stuck in the airport and then she just said, let me order um, a beer, just, just relax. And then they asked her for ID. And then she said, like, I've been stuck for 10 hours. Now I feel so good. <laughs> that's amazing. That's yeah, that's amazing. That's just what happens. That, that's true. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I'm really excited for this time for all of us. And I, I really uh, respect what you guys do. And I think building community and supporting each other instead of competing with each other is very important right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I'm really in a happy place when it comes to Asian women and, and beauty and what I do. I think it's a very good place, right? We could always do better, but I feel very proud of us. Yeah. 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 And I uh, just you mentioned like when they uh, have a joke, like they racist, you just stand up and then you don't want to uh, be working with them. And that's really takes courage because I think that's like in your yeah. early, uh, uh, early career. Uh, right. Yeah. So it's going to lose that kind of chance. Yeah. But sometimes it's really yeah. takes courage. Yeah. yeah. You have to, you really have to have boundaries. You have to, you have to teach people to respect you. They're not going to respect you because you're you, uh -huh. you're nobody to them. Uh -huh. You have to teach them, no, this line you don't cross. Uh -huh. And with, with me, I don't think I was even trying to be a good person. I think that's just my personality. I couldn't shut my mouth. Uh -huh. um, some, sometimes I'm okay at being polite and not saying something, you know, there's a time and place, uh -huh. but when you work for yourself, one of the luxuries is you get to pick and choose who you work with. Uh -huh. You get to pick and choose your rate. Uh -huh. You choose what you accept and you don't accept. And I thought to myself, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night if I work with people like that. And I don't, I don't feel good in my heart, in my stomach uh -huh. when I, when I, um, when I have to endure that kind of abuse. I, I don't think that's right. For anybody, not just Asian women. Mm -hmm. I, if I see that happen to someone else, I, I think I would say the same thing. It just bothers me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, that that's true. And it's not uh, professional either. Never mind the racism. It's so unprofessional. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, like you are not uh, only a makeup artist and uh, stylist. Uh, you are on. Um, on screen personalities, right? And uh, like a compared to artists and then uh, on screen personalities, like there's any like other skills, like must have skills to yeah. be uh, like that. Yeah, the, it's a great question. The first skill I would tell people uh, that's useful is to be calm under pressure. 
Uh, the TV world is very different from YouTube or TikTok or Instagram because when you're doing social media, generally you're in control mm -hmm. and you can see your you can see your own face. You control the volume, the lighting, the filters, what you edit. You edit mm -hmm. your own things usually, or you pay someone to edit how you want. Yes. Um, when you're on TV, you don't have control because typically it's not your show, mm -hmm. and typically. There's a whole crew. So then now there's a sound people and lighting and there's a teleprompter and a host and other guests. And then it's a huge uh, team. When people watch me on TV and it's five minutes of TV, they think, oh, it was so natural and cute. And, you know, it was so it looks so easy. And it's it's not. Uh, there's a lot of pressure. You usually have. Oh. Huh. I think we. <laughs> lost <laughs> Christine. I think she's gonna be back. We just wait a little bit. And uh You're coming back. <laughs> I got they, Zoom said get out. So I was like, hey, I'm not done yet. Zoom said, Stop okay. talking. Yeah. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, you said yeah, so I think uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot TV going on. Show, yeah. So I think yeah, so somebody's like behind the scenes telling you, you have only three minutes left, or hurry up, wrap it up, or someone's telling you, you know, don't say that, say this. Um it's a lot going on and okay. you have to the cat what people see has to be just this okay. they can't see you nervous or dropping something or or saying what did you say or i don't know what i'm doing you have to pretend you have to look like you're very calm and you know what you're saying and doing uh -huh. uh, so my first my first thing is you you need to learn how to be calm under pressure and i think being articulate and clear and letting your personality come through the screen, which is really hard. We also talked about that, right, Sherry? Yes, yeah. Um, it's, it's difficult when it's through a screen because some things are lost and some things come out strange and your voice sounds funny to yourself. You look different. Um, so you need to like figure out how loud do I speak? How fast do I speak? What words do I use? Um, practicing so you don't say um all the time or or you know rub your face do things you know things we do in real life that are okay uh -huh. you can't do on you can't do on tv because it's distracting uh -huh. uh, when i when i first started i i said um a lot and actually all the time i still do um but i say certain words a lot and then when you watch yourself on tv it's it's embarrassing because you're like oh my goodness do i laugh like that do i talk like that so uh, it's it's a lot of learning um, how to how to accept who you are. Mm -hmm. I think um, another interesting thing is producers will tell you you have to speak a lot louder and be very excited on TV. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to my friend, my voice is very low. I talk like this. I'm very calm. Mm -hmm. You know, blah 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 blah. If you do that on TV, people will fall asleep. They'll change your channel because okay. you know it's it's not exciting. So when you're talking and you have to say. Oh my god, I love this face cream. And it, it, it's it's funny because when you're doing it, you think, wow, I feel really stupid. And then when you watch it, you you're like, oh, it looks normal. So being animated and more excited is part of TV. Uh, -huh. uh I found that I found that really challenging at first because it was like, wow, that's that's a lot of energy. But if you don't bring energy on in studio and on the screen, uh -huh. you kind of fade into the background, which uh -huh. you don't want. So those are interesting skills to learn, I guess. Yeah, as how long it take you to be uh, like uh, comfortable to do the TV show? Uh, that's I would say there's two sides to the answer. The first answer is I was comfortable right away because I think I found my home. Like I feel very comfortable in front of the camera and always have. I think since I was a kid, mm -hmm. it was always like wanting to perform and dance and sing and play sports. And I just loved applause and people. And I, I think I'm an uh, outgoing personality. So. I felt at home in that sense, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel like I was at it for at least, yeah, a few years, like five years. Like I, I did a lot of learning. And wow. I think even now when I look at my TV segments, there's always things to learn. I learned that I like, for example, strange, you know, details. I, I, I watched myself. I, I used to blink really fast on TV 
And when you watch it, it looks like you're like, <laughs> it's a windy day. And I was just like doing this all the time. And I said, oh my God. And that was just normal blinking. When I'm excited, I blink a lot. Uh-huh. So I had to actually consciously tell myself while I'm talking, stop Don't blinking, blink. calm down, mm-hmm. calm down. And sometimes things go wrong and your heart starts to go like this. Yes. I've had so many things happen on live TV. Yes. And you, you literally have to talk to your head and say, Christine, calm down. You know what you're doing. Focus. Focus on what you're saying. And so for me, focusing on doing what I'm good at makes me feel confident and calm as opposed to focusing on what went wrong because the lighting is not your fault. The sound is not your fault. If you know, there's certain things that you can't control in the TV world, uh-huh. um, but what you can control is how you behave. So I try to make sure that no matter what happens and goes wrong, uh-huh. at least I, I do my job, right? Just do your job is what I tell people. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're just saying it's take uh, uh, five, uh, f- almost five years, several years. Yeah, to be at least. Company. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of learning to be to be really good at what you do. Mm-hmm. You know that book. You know, uh, ten thousand hours. Like in order to be a pro at anything, you have to put in at least ten thousand hours. 10, it's so true because you, in order to feel like you don't you don't even hesitate when someone asks you a question. Um, when you feel like the expert, when they call you an expert, Mm -hmm. you really have to know, you really have to know your stuff. And that takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, watched, uh, the show. Uh, I think that's Marilyn and uh, Dennis show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the couple of days ago and you gave so many, uh, good tips and especially like how to put sunscreen for the toddler and so yeah. they don't run away like just you're chasing them right <laughs> yeah. so how uh like you collect all those tips like i think that's real life like people just uh, doing it and then uh, even think like this is just the way doing it so t- uh, like uh, tell me about yeah. that that's uh, also you're asking fabulous questions that i didn't even think about um the inspiration and knowledge comes from everywhere. So first and foremost, you have to have base knowledge, of course, like what, what you do, you have to know really well. But beyond that, things are always changing, right? Technology and trends, and there's new people who are good at what you do. Mm-hmm. So always be a student. So I learn from other people too. When I hear tips, I always try it for myself. So if somebody else says, oh, you should try using uh, eye cream underneath the concealer or whatever. Mm -hmm. I try it first because I want to make sure I never recommend something I didn't try that didn't work, right? So I always try it first. The second thing is don't be afraid to be creative and and recommend something new. Um, I think with that sunscreen thing, for example, you know, I said use a stencil to to make funny shapes on kids so they can have fun rubbing it. Yeah. I don't know if somebody else recommended it, probably, but I came up with that because I thought, I looked at my own daughter, who's almost two, and I said, what does she like? She likes animals. She likes flowers. She likes nature. So I thought, okay, first of all, let's go outside because doing it inside is messy and hard. Yeah. So I said, let's do it in the backyard while she's running around and playing. Secondly, I thought, okay, let's make animal shapes something she likes to make it fun. So I think just being open-minded and always trying new things is really important. Uh Um, And and paying attention. Like I pay attention to nature. I pay attention to TV shows. I pay attention to my clients. Um, You get ideas from everywhere. You just have to be open to it. You know, I feel like you have to pay attention when regular life is happening. Uh Yeah. Be conscious. Yeah. Yeah, Be conscious and uh, be like a kid. Be Curiosity, uh, right? Like I listen. Thing. I have to say, my best learning lesson is becoming a mom. I learn so much from Savannah mm-hmm. because I'm seeing the world through her eyes for the first time, and it's the most magical thing I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah, yeah. Later, we're gonna talk about that. Like you being a mom. Yeah. Like uh, one thing I want to ask you because I, I check it. Uh, you have so many uh, bottles on your wall. Um, there's all different kinds of cream, mm-hmm. this and that. Like how you can figure out, like when I see so many bottles, I got just confused, right? Yeah. So like what kind of system in your head, like you yeah. can, yeah, give us so, some tips. Yeah. yeah, give you all the secrets. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, first of all, organize. So if your makeup cabinet or your bathroom is chaos and disorganized, you'll never, you'll never really have a routine that you feel good about, I mm -hmm. think. So what I tell people, organize your bathroom or your bedroom to have the products you like or that you want to try first. So it has to be visible and accessible because if it's in a cupboard, in a box, in a bag, you're not going to use it. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, organize things in also in order that you use it. When my clients say to me, I don't know when to use essence or toner or serum or moisturizer, eye cream. I said, okay, here's a good order. Mm -hmm. Put it in order so that it's easy for you to see one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, however you organize. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is you, you kind of have to do some of the work yourself. You have to educate yourself on what ingredients are good for your skin type, what you like. You have to be a little bit of a scientist uh -huh. and uh, test test on you. You can't rely on people like me or anybody at Sephora or the drugstore or wherever you shop uh, because it's not their job. They don't have your face and your body and it's not their job. They don't, they really don't care about you. I mean, why would they, why would they care really? They're doing their job to sell things. Yes. <laughs> like you need so you need to be the, the smart person uh -huh. and say, okay, I know I want brightening. I want vitamin C. Uh -huh. So that's one step. You know, like you have to narrow down what it is you're looking for. Uh -huh. And lastly, I, I always tell my clients, you have to have a goal. So whether it's a skincare goal, a makeup goal, a wellness goal, you have to look at yourself and say, okay, I want to feel less stressed. I want to take time for myself. I want you know, my eyes to look bigger, or I want my skin to look more dewy. Uh -huh. I want, you know, I want the best red lipstick. You have to have a goal because if you're, if you don't know what you want from beauty or your routine, how, how are you going to, how are you going to figure it out? How is someone else going to know what you want? Right. Uh -huh. So you need to take a minute and, and, and kind of simplify and figure out, narrow down what your goals are. That's my biggest tip, I would say. Yeah, that, that's a really good uh, uh, suggestion because when we mention about your goals, uh, uh, what looks uh, beauty, like the beauty philosophy, like from East, from Asian to West, is so different, right? So different, like, it, yeah. It, as I'm Chinese and I know like we all like, uh, like the, uh, the light color of the skin, mm -hmm. And yeah. then the big eyes, you know, big eyes. Yeah. small face. Yeah, small face. So what's your beauty philo uh, philosophy? I love this question because I have a Korean mom mm -hmm. and I was born here. So we had, when, when I was growing up, I remember I would be outside playing all the time and my dad has dark skin. So my mom would look at me and say, why are you so dark? And, you know, like not in a good way. She said, why are you so dark? And I looked at her and said, I like being dark. I, I'm outside. I, I, it looks healthy. Like I like my tan. Uh -huh. And what is fascinating about skin tone in, in Asia, my mom told me at least a long time ago, only lower class peasants got dark because they work outside. Wealthy people and people who have a good life are pale. Uh -huh. And I started laughing. I said, mom, First of all, that's a long time ago, okay? I said, second of all, in North America, it's the exact opposite. When you have a tan, it means you have money to travel. <laughs> you, go, you go on vacation all the time and you're outside enjoying the boat or the beach or a good life. You're not stuck inside working. In North America, when you're pale, it means you're probably sick and inside all the time and you never get to go outside. So. It's a lifestyle thing. So I think when, when I thought about it, I said, wow, that's a really interesting difference. And uh, I always, my skin tone is darker, even if I don't go in the sun all the time. Mm -hmm. My skin tone just it is, that's, it is what it is. So what, I, what else I like um, now that I realize and other people are realizing, when you look at Asian women and Asian people, it's a huge range. You have you know, Chinese people who are fair and Korean people who are light. And then you have tanned people. And then you have South Asians who are very dark, dark. like Indians. Yeah. yeah. So to me, I think growing up in a multicultural society, I always understood that there's a range. It doesn't make sense that everybody's light or everybody's dark. That's not, that's not beautiful to me. To me, what is beautiful is, okay, this person takes care. It's glowing. The skin is even. Mm -hmm. They have, um, you know, they have nice texture. Mm -hmm. They, um, everything's moisturized, that kind of thing mattered to me, not the actual 
uh, color. Uh -huh. So um, I find that there's a big difference in makeup style between Asian women in Asia and versus North America, right? Uh -huh. um, which is which is actually fun because Asian beauty standards are really coming into North America and the rest of the world. Like it's it's okay to be very fresh and natural and have very subtle makeup because that's more Asian style to have flawless skin and very subtle makeup. Whereas in North America, it's like big lashes, big brows, lots of contour, lots of <laughs> glitter everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, we're excessive. So I think for me, the fun part is about makeup to play a different role every day. Sometimes I wear no makeup. You know, uh -huh. sometimes I wear just mascara and lip gloss. Sometimes I like this red lips and lashes. So for me, it's based on mood, not not the same every day. Uh -huh. So uh, I, th I, I think it's like playing dress up. I think the, the kid inside me really has fun with makeup. Mm hmm. Oh, that, that's really good because I, I realize like uh, like the Chinese, when we uh, learn how to draw like the this one, and usually they said uh, the front, you should be light and then uh, getting uh, darker and at the end. But I found that so many Western uh, ladies, like they really dark. Dark, dark here and then the light at the end. So it's... I think it, I think it depends on your face too. So when I teach makeup lessons, I always tell people your, your makeup style has to match you. Mm -hmm. you, you even if you're both Asian, what looks good on Sherry doesn't look good on Susan, doesn't look good on, you know, Natasha. Mm -hmm. it, your, fa your features are different. So for me, the important thing is symmetry, blending, and like the more technical aspects of makeup. Mm -hmm. The other stuff is all personal preference. It, it really depends on how you feel you look best. So mm -hmm. I think that's what you have to pay attention to, not so much what other people say is the right or wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to learn how to do it for yourself is important. Yeah, that's true. And like when we talk about the beauty, it's aging. It's everybody. It's like every time we, we cannot like run away from it, right? And then yeah. there's uh, so many uh, in the social media, right? You see like the celebrities, like they look forever young. So uh, yeah. <laughs> and what do you think about that, like aging? Aging is tricky. It's, it's, it's something that happens to everybody. And at some point you have to accept it to be mentally and emotionally healthy. You have to understand you, you, things are going to change. Like mm -hmm. even me, my eyes change shape. Now I have to do my makeup differently than when I was in my twenties. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just, that's just part of life. But I think having a healthy balance, like nobody likes getting old. If you're going to be honest, nobody says, Oh, I love getting wrinkles. I love being tired all the time. I love being in pain for no reason. Like that's, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. So aging isn't fun, but at the same time, I think there is a way to do it gracefully and accept the changes and do your best to look your best at any age. So for me, it's not about like doing all these drastic surgery and injections to look like a different person. I think, I think, the important thing is to look like you, but the best 30 year old, the best 40 year old, the most 50 year old at any stage that you are, mm -hmm. because, because I think, I think it's okay to want to look youthful and, and, and better than when you wake up. I think there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but uh, I think there's, there is a fine line. There's a point where you have to, you know, tell yourself, okay, well, this is just what happens when you age, you get lines, you get dark spots, mm -hmm. you, you know, your face starts to drop. So you have to learn different techniques. You have to learn how to do makeup differently, to maybe different skincare products. Uh, maybe you have to rest more. There's a, there's ways to feel good about your age at any age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give uh, give us some tips like you are <laughs> using to deal with. Sure. It. Yeah. Okay. Number one, uh, if, if I don't sleep, I think I look five years older the next morning. If I sleep, wow, my skin is smooth. It's plump. My eyes don't look so like the under here doesn't look bad. When I don't sleep, you can really see it. Mm -hmm. My second tip is honestly, it's more lifestyle things. It's stress. If your lifestyle is full of stress all the time, your body is actually producing cortisol to, to kill your cells. It's killing your DNA stress. Mm -hmm. So you will get sick. You will feel tired. You will not feel motivated and you will look worse. And that's just 
that's just science. It's not even beauty. It's science. Uh-huh. So sleep, sleep, getting good sleep, minimizing stress when you can. So, you know, even taking five minutes uh, to do a facial massage or maybe uh, go lock the bathroom door and take a bath or whatever, you know, whatever it is for you to relax, to take me, I call it me time. And I remember when I used to started doing my nighttime skincare routine and my husband was living with me, he said, what are you doing in there? So then 20 minutes, I said, you know what? This is my time, go away. <laughs> and I just take my time at night. I wash, I, dub, I triple cleanse. I take off all my makeup. I make sure my face is super clean. I do all the serums, facial massage. I do night creams. I do facial oils. Everything that makes me feel, ah, you know, before I sleep mm-hmm. because I deserve it. I, I work hard. I, I give everything that I can to my husband and my daughter. And sometimes I just deserve to have alone time. So that's and, one of my tips. Take alone time. Yeah, that's great uh, tips. Like uh, give uh, like uh, yourselves a little bit of time. Just make you relax, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, your routine, your beauty routine should not be stressful and should not be rushed. That's my tip. If you're rushing, maybe do less and just take more time to do less steps, but it, it should feel like pleasure. It should feel like relaxation and it should feel happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know you are uh, uh, like, we, we can say public figure, right? Like an influencer. And as a key opinion leader, uh, how do you find your personal brand? And then uh, like your style, uh, give us mm. some tips. I think like uh, before, like we start, we talk about, right? How do you yeah. find? It's a little bit of a tricky balance between you have to pay attention to what is trending, what is new, what young people are doing, what people your age are doing, older mm-hmm. people. You have to pay attention um, to the trends, but you also have to translate it for yourself. Mm-hmm. So if everybody is, for example, everyone is doing these big fluffy brows where your hairs look crazy and that's the trend. Uh, a lot of people are doing that even now. I tried it and I look like a crazy person. I look like a dead caterpillar on my face. I said, no, not for me. So I, and I, and I did one eyebrow that way. I did the other one my way. And I showed my husband, I said, is it just me or does this look really stupid on me? And he was like, yeah, no, honey, that's not for you. <laughs> and I think it's important to incorporate trends. Like if everybody is wearing red, okay. You can wear red, but choose a shade that's right for you because maybe bright red is too much for you. Maybe you need to be darker red or maybe just red lipstick and black clothes. Like there's a way to incorporate trends without doing literally exactly what everybody else is doing. I think that doesn't make you cool. I think that makes you a follower. And I think it's important to be a leader if you're an influencer. Mm -hmm. So what is an influencer? You are influencing other people to buy things or do things. It's a very important position. Mm -hmm. So if people are paying you to influence other people, first of all, you should be a positive effect, in my opinion. You should be teaching people something positive. Um, Secondly, I think you need to make it unique. So even if you're following trends, you need to make sure, ah, is this flattering on my face shape? Is this this authentic to who I am? So you're going to have to say no to some partnerships. You're going to have to set limits on how much work you do how much, um, how many contracts you sign, for example, what, which brands to work with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a balance between performance. Yes, you're kind of performing, but you also have to keep it real because people will know if you're being authentic or not. And I think the best influencers in the world, whether they have millions of followers or just a few hundred, I think the best influencers are true to themselves and you can feel that through their page. Like, wow. She really does like food. I know she likes food because she also ta- always talks about food. So when you share about some food ordering service, people are not like, what is this? She would never use that. You know what I mean? Or like if you're vegan and you're posting about McDonald's, it's not authentic. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to pick brands that are in line with your beliefs and philosophies. Mm-hmm. That's really takes some time so, huh? and need to try so many things. To find a style yeah. like fit your yeah. uh, fit, uh, it's true. Yourself. It's yeah. true. Yeah, that that's true. Like I'm on the way to figure out. <laughs> and 
Yeah. And, uh, what, what kinds of do you have any like a product that uh, recommendations for uh, uh, special for Asian uh, women? Yeah. So uh, that's a good question too. If for Asian women, I don't have a general record because even Asian women are very different from each other. So, you know, while we're all of Asian background, mm. you know, somebody might have normal dry skin. Somebody might have acne. Like a lot of Asian people suffer from acne too. Yeah. Um, you might be 65 and have age spots. You know, you might be 22 and have pimples. So. I don't think there's any one brand or one product or specific like general I can say, but I would say that because I think most Asian women find clean, bright skin very important, regardless of what you look like, how old you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do think that double cleansing, like a lot, of, a lot of the things that are traditional in our cultures, mm -hmm. uh, there's a re there, there's a reason why they're popular. Mm -hmm. So double double cleansing. If you're a makeup wearer, if you wear any kind of makeup, you have to clean your face very well because makeup is meant to be stubborn and stick to your face. And if you don't double cleanse or if you don't properly take it off, <laughs> excuse me, it can cause problems with the skin. Right. So cleaning is cleansing is really important. Um, and I would say. These days, I don't know about you, but I think glowy skin is very, very in. So definitely products that add luminosity and like let your skin shine and look like skin is really, really trending for Asian women and everybody. Yeah. Oh, well, that's true. Like the, but I read some articles just saying like, if you clean your face like uh, uh, too much, it's gonna like, uh, drier skin, this and that, so that, like in the morning, usually just use the water washer that that hurts. I don't know oh, I which tried one that. is right or I not. Tried, I, tried, I tried that. Uh -huh. So here's the thing. Um, here's the benefit and, and, and drawback. So the benefit, for example, there was a trend uh, recently that said, don't wash your face in the morning. So I tried it for months. Uh -huh. It definitely works for anti-aging. You do uh, retain more of your natural oils because uh -huh. you're not stripping the face. Water is very drying, so mm -hmm. it has a very low pH balance compared to your skin. Mm -hmm. So what's happening when you use water to clean is you're taking away all the natural oils, which is good if you have breakouts, but it's bad if you have normal or dry skin. The trick is even a wash with water, you have to make sure to do all the skincare steps immediately after. So toner, serum, moisturizer, pack on the moisture after you wash. Now, when I wasn't washing my face with water, I was still doing things. So you can use Missler water, like it's um, you can put on a cotton pad and just blot the oil away. It is important to remove the excess oil because it can cause buildup and breakouts. Oh. So I wouldn't recommend not washing your face in the morning if you have oily skin. If you have dry skin, it's a great, it's a great test. But like I said, I cheated. You would use like, I would use like a toner and kind of wipe off some of the oil, uh -huh. but tone my skin. Uh -huh. So there, there are, there are tricks to, to that. But yeah, if you limit the amount of H2O you put on your face, it does help preserve some of the moisture. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's, let me see. Uh, any beauty, uh, any beauty products that you can't live without of ah. you, know, you must. Hi. Yep, mm -hmm. sure. I do have those. Uh, a general one is eye makeup remover. I cannot go to sleep if I do not take off every piece of eyeliner, mascara. I hate, I hate waking up with any uh, makeup. And if my clients come to sit in my makeup chair, the first thing I do is take a Q-tip and I put eye makeup remover and I do this. And so many of them say, I'm not wearing makeup. I said, oh yeah, okay, wait. And I do this and it's black. So it's really important for me to, because I have to wear makeup for my job and I like wearing makeup, um, as much effort I put into putting it on, I put more into taking it off. So I makeup remover, I can't live without. I can't travel without it. I can't sleep without it. It's in every bag, every bathroom, <laughs> I makeup remover. Um, the second thing, I, lo I love my like, Lip balms, like lip mask and all that, like Laneige lip mask, sleeping mask is one of my, I have every flavor in every bag. 
But uh, when I go to sleep and I take my makeup off, I have to put lots of lip balm so my lips never, I hate when my lips feel dry. Like if they look a little bit dry, oh, I cannot, you I cannot talk, I cannot <laughs> focus. I have to make sure they're moisture. Because my job is talking, so I think my lips get really dry if I don't do that. Uh -huh. um, I think I think that's important. And now that I'm older, when I was younger, like I couldn't live without mascara, for example. I had to have lashes done or my brows now that i'm older brows are still important for sure eyebrows make you look like you're awake and balanced mm -hmm. um but skin oh my god skin is everything so <laughs> now i i just want to look good with and without makeup so even if i'm not wearing makeup i put oils i put i put serums i put all kinds of things i want my skin to look fresh um and i think that helps people look youthful uh -huh. i think when you have good skin when you have good skin the makeup's just extra you know yeah, the the uh the skin, everything, huh? Everything, everything, everything. yeah, yeah, everything. And I I said like I go through your social media. You are like the woman have it all. Like you have beautiful uh, baby girl, and then your husband is so good with the baby and take care of yeah. all the time, right? So I just yeah. want to ask you another question. Okay. How do you find your Mr. Right? Like I talk with oh. several, several oh, that's, uh, girls. That's a personal question. Yeah. Yeah. They I'll said that. Like, yeah. I have a list of must have quality. And then I follow the list. Are you the no, same? The problem the same? with that, <laughs> somebody, you know what? The problem with the list, um, you might miss a good person because they don't fit your list. And mm -hmm. you might find someone who, checks off all those things, but you don't fit with. That's not the way humans work, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I wish I could follow, I wish I was that kind of person, you know, like, has a good job, good looking, nice yeah. family. Like, I know, I know all those things are important. Mm -hmm. I think what's more important is feeling inside your gut, like, you know, not you don't have to be a hopeless romantic, but I think you have to be very honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of person do I want to spend all this time with? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I knew I wanted a partner. I don't want somebody I have to take care of all the time or who always takes care of me. That's okay. not interesting to me. I don't need a man to buy me things. I, I work hard. I can buy my own things. So because I'm a very independent woman, my list would be very different than some other people. But for me, it was very important to feel like, wow, we're in life together. Yeah. And we are, by the way, my husband and I are very different, almost opposite. And it works because at, it, deep inside, we have the same goals. We want, we want to live a healthy, natural, happy life and raise our daughter a certain way. And that that is more important than you dress the same way or you like to go to the same parties or you like the same food. Like that stuff is nice if you both like to golf or you both like, you know, traveling. It's nice. It is nice. Yeah. But I don't I don't think that makes a good necessarily makes a perfect life partner i i've i've been with people who match better on paper mm -hmm. and it, it it didn't work and i think that's because deep inside you just don't have that connection so for me connection is very important you can't really explain that right when you mm -hmm. meet somebody and you yeah. feel Instant yeah it doesn't mean they're, it doesn't mean they're perfect it doesn't mean they're perfect what it means is for me someone asked me actually today how i knew he was the right person i said you don't really know but I do, I did feel a sense of peace. So our lifestyle, very different from different country, different culture, different everything, upbringing, different family styles. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when we were together, it feels, it feels good. It feels peaceful. Even, even if we don't, not getting along, I feel safe and I feel at peace. Mm -hmm. So that that's most important also also he's very cute and sweet so you know yeah i i check it out because <laughs> you show you i saw he, like yeah <laughs> he's taking care of the baby and he's it's good so yeah he's sweet, good. you know like, he's good yeah. yeah he's a good person yeah. yeah yeah and do you think you're living a dream life right now Sometimes it doesn't feel like it. If I'm being honest, mm -hmm. uh, like the last the last three or four days have been madness. I've been overwhelmed. Even someone like me who appears to have everything and put together, like people think, oh, how do you do it all? And I'm very honest. I don't. Some days I cry. Some days I want to give up. Some days it's too much. Mm -hmm. And um, and then other days I feel very empowered and happy and grounded. So 
I think it's always like this for anybody, even if you think they look very successful or happy, yeah. celebrities, billionaires, they all have ups and downs. They all have doubts and insecurities. So, so I'm a normal person like anybody else. I don't, I don't think I'm exceptionally, you know, really exceptional in that way. But for me, I, I think in general, um, yeah, I feel very lucky sometimes and very grateful. Um, there is a lot of my life success that is hard work and then some of it is is definitely good fortune and good luck too so it's i think it's both when you really when you really feel like you're living the life you want i think it's a combination of things and i get a, a lot of help from amazing family friends colleagues people i work with they're so good to me uh -huh. and in life i think what you put in you get out so if you put that effort into your relationships and your business relationships and your personal relationships people connect with you on a different deeper level mm -hmm. so they're there for you when you need them and you're going to need to lean on other people at some point in your life so i learned that lesson even if you feel like superwoman and you can do everything because i have a mom like that and i i grew up thinking i can do anything and everything which is good but also makes you exhausted sometimes so yes. i'm i'm learning i would say i'm learning now in my 40s to slow down a little bit mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's true uh, I think like so many Asian women is uh, like a super woman. They want to yeah. take care of the family and uh, have their own uh, career and everything. They want to do it all. But sometimes we mm -hmm. really need to be slow down and uh, yeah. leave some time and just for us, like take care of us first. And yeah. then we can have the yeah. energy to take care of somebody else. Well, yeah. And why are we working so hard? You have to remember your goal. Why are we trying to be super? Why are we trying to do it all? What is it for? Mm -hmm. Well, you want to enjoy your life with the people you love. But if you're if you're too overwhelmed and too busy, it's 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 ironic because you're not enjoying your life and then you're not going to reach your goal ever because mm -hmm. you're going to work yourself to death and you're never going to actually enjoy the fruits of your labor. So you have to learn how to be like, OK, I worked hard. I feel a little bit overwhelmed and too tired every time, every day. I have nothing left to give my children or my partner. Maybe I need to take a break or vacation and slow down. Maybe I have to say no to money or no to success for a minute. And I think if you're truly good at what you do in life, you're never really going to fail. If you take a break, it's still going to be there. Like your job, if you're really good at what you do, you're, there's going to be still be work. There's, and if you're in a committed relationship where your partner is amazing and you're amazing, it's okay to take a break and say, I need some space for myself. I need me time. They're still going to love you and want to spend time with you. So, and your kids will understand too, you know? So I think that's an important lesson. I want to teach my daughter that actually no life is not everything about you as much as you're so cute and I love you and I want to give you everything. I also want you to learn important lessons that you're not the center of the universe. So. <laughs> That's true. You are not the center. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> okay, so let me see if there's any. Uh, uh, they all agree. They said it's so true what you're saying. Really is very uh, inspirational. And Thank there you. is another. What about for women that really don't have a makeup routine? All yep. know how to do makeup and want to yeah. get started. Any yep. recommendations? For sure. I mean, first of all, if you are living somewhere where you can have access to a teacher, like an expert, book a makeup lesson. It is very helpful because in person is very different. I love YouTube and I love tutorials, but it's really hard to learn unless someone's beside you uh -huh. and takes your hand. I, I actually take my client's hand and show them the angle. And because if you, if you, if you didn't grow up an artist or with a mom who wears makeup, how would you know? So don't feel bad if you don't have a routine. I think that's completely normal. I wouldn't have a job if you guys were all good at doing makeup. <laughs> so um, so I would start, I would start with one step at a time. Uh -huh. So if you look at yourself and you think, okay, I'd like to start wearing a little bit of makeup. Don't get 10 products and spend a thousand dollars. You won't use it and you'll waste money and you'll get frustrated. Start with one thing. So uh -huh. look at yourself and say, oh, I look really tired here. Maybe I'll just get a concealer uh -huh. and start with your fingers and just do this. That's it. Like literally 30 seconds in your morning. You can do that. 
and start and see if you like it and you look better, you look more awake, amazing. Next week, you could add mascara. Uh -huh. Maybe you want your lashes to look a little longer, get an eyelash curler, learn, practice how to use it, put mascara. So for me, if you know nothing about makeup, I call it the holy trinity, skin, brows, lashes. You don't know anything about lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, eyeliner, skip it. Just make sure your brows are symmetrical, like you missing hair or they're uneven, fix it. Make sure your skin looks nice and flawless. And then, you know, just give your lashes a little bit of mascara or lift if you if you can, mm -hmm. or eyeliner, something on your eye. And that's it. Start with three things. Oh. And then my advice is to build one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think, I also don't think women should feel the pressure. As somebody who loves makeup and thinks it's fun, I totally understand women who don't wear makeup at all. I think it's fine. When I was pregnant, I didn't wear makeup at all. And I loved it. When I'm in living in Barbados with my husband and baby oh. on the beach, I never wear makeup. And at first I was self-conscious, like, oh my God, they know I'm on TV and I look so like bad. I look like <laughs> so bad. And um, and I said, you know what? This is how I look. Deal with it. I don't really care what you yeah, think. It's accept. I don't really care. Who you are. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Who, where you yeah. are. Look, yeah, I think are. that's healthy if you, yeah. Look, yeah. You like your face with makeup and you like your face, face without makeup. Without I think that's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we already over time six minutes but there's oh, last question I'm so sad. okay yeah how to book a makeup lessons with christine i love it i can do virtual lessons so uh, maybe i'll ask you to share uh, my instagram handle is at christine show beauty okay so if you met you can message me send me a direct message or an email um and uh maybe you can contact sherry if you can't remember um, my handle but yeah. it's at christine show beauty and I respond to, uh, I think, all messages. It might take me some time if I have a lot at once, but I always respond to everybody and I can book like this. Uh -huh. I can book it with, you just use your phone. We can do FaceTime, we can use um, WhatsApp, we can use Zoom. There's there's ways to do virtual lessons if you're not in uh, where I live. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Christine. As like the way we talk, and then just the time pass like a fly. I know. Yeah. It's dark now. I was like, oh, yeah, I just when realized. We started. And then I see it's already 907. Thank you so much. I really enjoy it. And yeah. you are uh, like a, give us a lot of tips, uh, no matter uh, life tips and then uh, the makeup tips. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was such a pleasure. And I hope to see you all again. And I wish you all the best. And I'm just so, so excited to be part of this Asian woman community. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to find another chance. Okay. Yes, do yeah. it again. <laughs> do it again. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.